Well, hello! Welcome to We Are Live. What kind of show is this? Okay. Hi. All right. Hi. The other camera. There you go. Happy Monday, everybody. It's good big man weather out there. Oh, God. <laughs> Look out. <laughs> hello. God asses. Oh, please. The guy who fits a, a, a smidge below 75. Time. <laughs> Chris Dem and Travis Sorrell. Chili. Excited to be here in the studio that Tech Electronics Ooh. helped us build. Look at that. That hoodie finally makes sense when you wear it. Uh, <laughs> we're pumped to be here. We hope you had a good weekend. Uh, lots to talk about. So let's quickly say hello to the great Chris Gardner, who's the stream queen and scooter. <laughs> well, he's not a scooter aficionado. No, he's, he's a, a scooter sc- victim. Yeah, scooter. He's a scooter veteran. Veteran of Scooter Wars. Oh, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Good morning, gentlemen. Hey, guardy. Hi. Hello. Good morning, Walnut. Ah, throw up the threes or the Ws. Doot, doot, doot. If you were ordering a beer in Inglorious Bastards, what would that look like? Uh, 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 oh, no. no. I don't think that's Okay. Good. Not different. There you go. Uh, ah, the German knew. That was a, <laughs> that was a trick. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't want to. I didn't know where you were going with yeah, that. I was just sending Chris up to let everybody know he's probably a Nazi. Oh. Happy uh, seventh day of Cocktoberfest. Uh, 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 the name of Wes Anderson, appropriation, and white flight, Destin, Florida. You guys like that? This yeah. is a good one today. That's the only way you can yeah, bless a Cocktober day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is. You, you, do you have more, I guess, fall scents and things to get into for Cocktober now that it's fall weather? Uh, now the ozone's not being just seared away one ninety-five degree day in October at a time. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Mm-hmm. It's good pocket weather. It is good pocket weather. Love pocket weather. Mm, I love my pockets. What's pocket weather? You get a nice little jacket you can mm-hmm. wear. I don't have to have everything in my jeans or shorts nope. anymore. No, you do not. <laughs> you, but you're a cargo short guy. Well, I'm whatever these old navy oh, okay. shorts are. Well, pregnancy shorts, right? Oh, you don't have to call they them do that. have an elastic waistband, which mm-hmm. I quite, which is why I went and purchased them to oh, begin that makes with. Makes sense. But it's now nicer to have a little nice jacket on with my stuff in there instead when I'm walking from the bus stop here to work this morning. So ah, is it? Do you miss your scooter? Yes. Will you go back to it? Yes. Oh, yes. Like a scorned lover. Oh, wow. oh they're done cheating. Oh. This will stop. No, I'll go. One day. I'll go back oh. to her. But I've had to take the bus the past couple of days. So uh, a ten line just runs right up and down Lindell. I found out. Very, very convenient. So it's nice. So it's it's not been too much of an issue. Especially in the mornings, you get you get that fifteen twenty minutes to yourself. Yeah. Sit quiet and you and get to say hello to your fellow St. Louisans. It's not uh, bad. Yeah. Say hello, hello, patrons. It's not crowded. No, no of course. Y'all not. murder anybody this weekend? Oh God, come on! You like being on the bus? In St. Louis? I enjoy. I enjoy I mingling th- with St. Louisans. I don't think you talk to anybody if you get on a bus. I think. Well, I don't Gardner, talk to them, but if I, they say hello, they say good morning. Guess what I say back? Good morning, at, fellow St. Louisan. You stare at your shoes. No, I do not. I enjoy meeting my fellow human beings on the especially on public say? transportation. Good morrow. That's not what you say. How goes thee? Did you enjoy your Sunday service? That's generally it's black people and they probably go to church. Mm. Did you enjoy your Sunday service? How about Sunday school? Did you bless thy name? I hate the general public. Mm. I gotta figure out what I've said in the past so I can That's find not a, a way to get them deleted. Yeah. I wouldn't Wow. I wouldn't really try and figure all that out. Okay. I would just assume that there's anything you say that there's something to counteract that. Yeah. That's an assumption I would make if that's I were you. That's pretty fair. If I were in your shoes. Oh, that's pretty fair. Um, it's just a matter of if the audio or video evidence is readily available at the time you're saying whatever you're saying. I feel like that was out of context, though. Oh, maybe. Does it matter, though? That doesn't. Does it really matter? That really doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. Hmm. Well, it's good to see you this morning. It's yeah, good to see thanks. you as well. Chris, Chris, you're looking great as usual. Looking very delightful. Like, you had a nice little... A restful weekend. What'd you end up doing, pal? Nothing. The way it ought to be. That's God. all. And I won't even help for uh, <laughs> for continuity sake. I'm just nothing. He did nothing. No, I uh, I, I went. Uh, let's see. Friday, 
I was here fairly late. Uh, I'm trying to think. Let's see. Uh, Saturday, stopped by Grove Fest. Oh, did uh, the Grove Fest it up with our boy J.E. And, and kids? J.E. performed when it was super busy and beautiful at 9 p.m. Myself and Ian Edwards went at around midday, 2 or 3, before I had a meeting here later in the day. And then uh, it proceeded to, we did a, a, a trip down the strip. It's very cool, by the way. Oh, weather's nice, blah, blah, blah. These 17-year-olds in a band called Bleach. We're just melting faces. Wait, Bleach played at Grow Fest? No one told me about this. Do you know no. who they are? I didn't know who Bleach was. I didn't, they did I don't something know. with it. <laughs> they did something. No, it was, it was like, oh, cute. They've got some kids opening up the show. And they were a three-piece. And they, I was like, is this a goddamn White Stripes? What's happening here? Wait, hold on now. Ian Edwards was there. He put and, film up on his uh, Instagram. He's like, this is this is absurd. And you're comparing them to the White Stripes out the gate. You sure you want to do that? You want to try to find another other band? One, other one would be Black Keys or Wolf Mother. Take Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did you just compare these kids to three of the most preeminent bands we've heard in the last two decades? Okay, I guess I'll listen. Check to it. The, it, no, and I think I'll our go friend, on the Spotify. Something I have no, bleach? I have no clue okay, what, no, but know. something from uh, our friends at Gaslight did some maybe a show with them or what? something. I, I don't know. So I mean, I we have this on the record, right? In your community, the band name is Bleach. Mm. Bleach. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's then, a, then I would have known them if yeah. someone had Bleach. said that. Yeah. All exactly. right, so I got to listen to these. It kids. was. It Where was are they absurd. from? They're from the Lou. I think they're from O'Fallon. Or oh Saint wow! Or All right. All right. I don't. Whatever it was, they. You said I'm melting saying, faces, it was white stripes, black keys. We were like, and, and Ian and I were like, what the, f what's happening here? I was like, are these high schoolers? He goes, they look like junior high. Okay. Like, <laughs> now, did Ian First of all, give you some narcotic at some point before no, you hit No, neither one of us really do that. Yeah. Really do he, that? Well, I hate when people say stuff like that when it he comes said to he, drugs. Either you do it or you don't. No, I don't do it. Don't really do that. I just take a half a Coke. Okay. What? I don't. Take half a blunt. I, I don't. You don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. Do it. You don't, don't do it. That's fine. Yeah. Then you do. Shut up. You, you you do drugs. You just don't do a copious amount of drugs. I declined drugs on Friday. That's good. From the doctor. Well, that's stupid. It was prescribed to you. And I could have sold them if I would have. Well, that would have been illegal, and you probably would have ended up in jail. But would I? It's Cocktoberfest, yeah, and I'm white, true. Travis. And you do have a dream team. My apologies. Again, me forgetting what month it is. But you're telling me they melt faces. They were really good, and it was no, very surprising. No, I trust surprising. your music judgment. Because they were surprised. No, because and then I had Ian Edwards standing by me, who literally just put out a special, and he's just like, they're so confident. Like that was the thing. <laughs> he's like, look at these people up there. He's <laughs> like, so they were, confident. No, they didn't. They were just like, they were like, what's up, guy? They they were having a good time. So I okay. feel I feel dumb. All right, Bleach. I'm jumping on the bandwagon. About to find out what y'all about. If y'all not bumping the music, then they I'm were playing come back. live, and it was. I was just like, dude, okay. this is absurd. All right. All right. Yeah, it wasn't like uh, we've been playing guitar for two years and we drug out our family for these punk covers. Like this was original music and it okay. was absurd. Okay, shout but out either to way, Bleach. Let's yeah, get so them on we the went, show. Gardner, we got, let's get Bleach on the show. That's what he goes. You need to get them on the show before they won't do it. <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> so like we, Ian uh, almost did. Yeah, right. <laughs> now, uh, yeah, I had that and then uh, spent some time in God's country. Watch the Cardinals blow. Uh, Murphy Settlement? Yep. Watch ah, the Cardinals nice. blow. Uh, one of the uh, oh. best veteran pitching performances you could ever see. No, we don't see want to have to talk anything inning. depressing. We don't. We can pretend yeah. like it never happened. I'm game for that. Yeah. If uh, if they lose today, you'll be free to come to Happiest Hour this uh -huh. Thursday. That's right. Sophie's Artist and Cocktail Lounge. Free comedy every Thursday. Kicks off at six o'clock. Happiest Hour special start at four p.m. Get off work. Come by. Thanks to Jack Daniels and Schlafly for uh, providing. The support, and we'll have specials of theirs on tap for mm, you. Goody, goody, gumdrops, drop drops. That's right. Come out and bring some fun. I enjoy Schlafly. Like? Have you tried mixing Jack with Schlafly? I don't know if they recommend I call it that. Jack Fly. Mm -mm. No. Mm, delicious. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Jack Fly. Got a call from both of them. They said, you're fired. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> that was Mr. Is that how sponsorships Daniels work now? Schlafly. Mr. Daniels. Yeah. It was Schlafly. a weird, it was a weird uh, stipulation in the contract that they demanded to have. And now oh, I understand why. Oh, they have why. control yeah. over personnel now. I did not now. know this. I did not. Yeah. Whoopsie. That's a tough best one. Best not to tell you. That's all right. I'm going to uh, call my friend Jim Mean. Let's see what he say about it. No, let's see. Um, mm -hmm. I got some work done. It was nice and quiet, but oh, I also such watched. such a freaking nerd. Oh. <laughs> Look at me. I'm going to be a grown man. Do a responsibility. 
possibilities. Oh, look at me. Oh, look. Oh, look at the Muppet of capitalism. Look at it cursing me around, not enjoying my life. I'm in my mid-30s, and I'm not taking the time to spend it with my family and friends enjoying it. I'm a puppet to capitalism. Oh, look at me. Dance, dance, monkey. Didn't you go to New York to work for capitalist-driven puppets? I did not. You worked for a, a, a show that just regular puppets. puppets. Well, it was just regular puppets. Some of the traditional puppets. Mm -hmm. Classy puppets. Right. No, I was with my family and doing things. <laughs> oh. so. <laughs> oh, my so yeah, I got some work done, but then also I uh, I worked in the Great Depression, Gary Goldman's oh, special. Oh yeah, ah, that yeah. was good. It was a good mix of uh, his stand up and then cutting away to I guess his story of having to be institutionalized for a couple weeks and kind of reset with some therapy and everything else. So that was really good. And then I did watch most of the Cardinals game, and that was got you back also, into a depression. Also depression. I think, yeah. uh, and he recently in his uh, lead up to his stand up. I've become a huge fan of Gary Goldman. I was a huge fan, has been for a long time. Judd Apatow pro uh, produced I saw, I saw. And I, and I saw his comment even regards to the quote-unquote cancel culture. And I, and I really appreciate what he said. He essentially said, a lot, it's funny how a lot of these guys who are crying about the world of cancel culture are doing it with $20 million deals on Netflix to complain it about. So it's like they're, they have this platform and they're getting paid a lot of money to truly complain about a culture that truly doesn't cancel anything. So I, I am a huge fan of Gary. He's a guy that I don't know if it's going through this. What I he's know what through. irony culture. That's what I'm going. I like that irony culture. I would prefer that probably more than anything else. But I appreciate. Look, when you have to, when you do stand up, it you know it's, you're very vulnerable. And for a guy to go this deep into Ooh. his personal life, uh, he truly look uh, more power to him because I think he truly believes, and he's probably right that you know being this forward with what he had to go through hopefully will help a lot of people. He has gone in front of across the country. He's toured in front of, and of course, will ultimately watch his special. So I, you know, credit to him for being able to have the, the, the courage to. And I, I truly mean that. I know we often throw that word around for a lot of folks, but that that takes real courage to be able to open yourself up to that extent and and show everyone what you had to go through. I don't know too many comedians who will acknowledge that they were institutionalized for a couple of weeks uh, dealing with what they were dealing with, what he was dealing with. So Yeah, he normalized it quite a bit because he, and he talks about it in the special, so I won't give much away or whatever, but uh, basically just saying like we have one idea of how these things go and that needs to change because right. he was extremely normal and uh, yeah, it was good. Those good for Gary Goldman though. He was yeah. a huge fan of his and he's very funny on Twitter when I was on Twitter many, many moons ago. Yeah, what's going on? You haven't mm -hmm. been super, you have, you've been off Twitter? Here's the thing that's happening that's kind of scaring me. I don't miss it. Yeah, you shouldn't. It's a psychosis it. of sorts, the way you were using it. it. Yeah, I don't miss it. No, I'm not sitting up here and saying that my life is now 40 times better because I haven't been on Twitter. I won't go to those, to those lengths. But I will say that I don't miss the toxicity. I don't miss even like even some of the inside jokes. I don't miss the memes. Like I still get what I need from my normal news sources. You don't miss black Twitter? I do don't necessarily miss black Twitter. I, I, I miss the camaraderie. I miss some of the conversations. And, but that, that was few and far between. That's why I had to kind of take a step back. And again, this isn't me saying, I'm done with social media. I'm not, I'm not that person. I am just simply taking a break. And, I, and it's been uh, over two weeks. And I have to say... You were tweeting a lot. Before. I was tweeting a lot, man. It was, it was, and again, it's, it's, it was a reaction to what was going on around. And it's in the world and the news just the conversations that were taking place, and I was just like, ah, uh, I'm spreading my mental self way, way too thin and caring mental too self. much for things that I probably shouldn't care as much about. It's one thing to care about issues. It's another thing to like get that, you know, that gut feeling where you just feel like you have to invest. Mm -hmm. And once I feel, felt, felt like I was getting to that point, I was like, all right, let's, let's put it down. Let's flip over the phone. Let's go outside. Let's... Soak up some air. That's Did fine. Did you some, do that? Did find you? some ass. Were you outside? Let's find some strippers. Did you go Let's outside this weekend? Of, oh, man. Did I ever. Whew. Oh, what'd You're you talking do? about big man weather. Man, I walked and ate chili. I walked <laughs> around my neighborhood eating white chili. Because mm. it was Oktoberfest, so I had white chili. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I in, look, I had myself a, had myself a little, little beverage filled with alcohol and barley and wheat. Mm -hmm. Some would call it beer. Mm. Had me a couple of those. So maybe you walked four around your neighborhood drunk? Uh, essentially, I would say drunk and enjoying myself. 
Were the neighbors enjoying yeah, your behavior? They, I don't know. They probably made a few phone calls. It was homecoming weekend uh, in my neck of the woods. Hazelwood Central was celebrating their homecoming. The Hawks. The Hawks. Was where my careful parents now. went. Careful now. Yeah, I know. I had to be careful, too. That's where my mom and dad went. Yeah, did they now? That's where my siblings went. I went to Hazelwood East, of course. I don't know that it was Central. Spartans. When they went there, though. I don't think it was. I think it was like Hazelwood. High school. They were a year apart in high school. And when they were going there, there were three separate shifts. So there was a morning, an afternoon, and, and an night evening. Shift. And those were rotating, like, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they never even saw each other in school. They ended up meeting in a true North County love story, working together at Kmart in Cross Keys. That's cool. Hmm. That is so cool. A North County love story. That is a North County one love story. Hazelwood still then, remains one of the largest school districts in the state. Yeah, that's, that's crazy, right? Be like, why do we have to play you in basketball? That's yeah, that used to be fair. They meet and... Okay, well, I don't want to hear the hey, song. Hey, 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 man. Hey, man. Why do you take pleasure in knowing that stuff? Yeah, I, why? I, I just know it. Mm. So. It is, it, is, it is something that you're going to have to. Like, there's going to come a point where you're going to have to tell your kids... That you know, oh you have yeah. To tell your kids shit. I met your mama. You're their parents. They had this flyover festival, and uh, she came backstage after our roast show, and uh, bada boom, bada bang, here you are. Is that how you plan on meeting your baby's I mama? Think, I think I feel like if I put it into the universe, that's likely I'm how it's going to work. I'm gonna call flyover and tell them to ban you from <laughs> any contact with not... festival goers. Can you do that? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's part of the deal. Speak- Another stipulation. Yeah, you haven't read any of your contracts. Uh-uh. Yeah. Yeah, I should probably get around yeah. to it. You just hit accept, accept, accept. Yeah. I do. I should probably Scroll. stop treating it like right. a check mark. Have I accept. read the terms of service? Can I read? Come on. Boom. Yeah, I need to stop treating it like a an Apple contract. I need to just to stop hitting accept and maybe mm-hmm. read a few paragraphs. Shouldn't there I? it is. Can we have access to your contract? Yes, yes. Yeah. I need this new app. I don't know why the Russians are inside my contact. Mm-hmm. Well, you agreed to it in page three. Yeah. That's fair. So it's a, that's how this all happens, Travis. How are you feeling, my friend? As we all recall, I yeah. Am let's okay. get a let's get a October health update. Um, I have a slight. It seems like a small tear in my left MCL. Oh boy! So I got a knee brace. Got a steroid shot on Friday. Sean took me to the urgent care. And sat in the lobby reading a book. Is that the blind leading the blind, if you've ever heard of that? Mm-hmm. Good God. Sean at an urgent care. was the last time he was stepped inside of a facility? Uh, it had been about a year, because if you remember, uh, it might have been our last Dogs on Film when he was flipping through bills, and he was like, I got this urgent care bill, and I don't even remember it going. Jesus, Sean. <laughs> That was like a year ago. Oh, boy. Um, I still have... Uh, oh, is that... Oh, look at that catch. Michael Caine. Hey, Mike Caine. The real some, star. Some men just want to watch the world burn. I don't know why my Michael Caine sounds like that. It sounds like sh- you're doing a Sean Connery. It sounds like yeah. a Sean Connery. I was watching the uh, the Untouchables the other night. Okay. That's probably what it was. So you're just crossing them both out. This is Chicago. The Chicago war. The Chicago war. You put those in the grave. Okay. Um, so that's about it right now, but they think it'll heal pretty quick. So okay. I am hoping. I got a knee brace on. Are we putting you on the IL? I'm hoping to be back on the scooter by the end of the week. Really? I'm will you up your? Will you wow? Up, will you up your protection game? Will you wear a condom every morning? No, well, I don't think that's necessary. No. It's all right, guys. No, <laughs> I have not bought a. condom You know how long I know it's been since you put on a condom. You just said, "Hold on, guy." Yeah. I can assure back when, you that back sound is day, not made. I used to, they, had, they were wooden. <laughs> what, 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 did you have the fastener? Or? Yeah, that's right. I would rather had... not have sex than put on a condom. <laughs> Damn. I am not. De- no. Damn. No. This is going to get real personal. <laughs> oh, real my hard. God, man. <laughs> Y'all just out here shooting at the club all willy-nilly? They still have the crankshaft in them. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, Gardner is I a live Saquon Barkley. I a block Barkley. and a half away from Planned Parenthood. Oh, my God. Oh, that's not no. how it works. Oh. You're the reason they're trying to tear it down. <laughs> You've been ir- irresponsibly just 
Got a punch Mix card. It. How Mix good, it. guys? See, the third one's on the house. <laughs> Gardner's the Saquon Barkley of scooter riders because that is Wolverine level recovery time. <laughs> that is. He, it almost that is. begs to say <laughs> Wolverine he was, level. <laughs> and that's from the Black Sheep. It almost begs to say he was overselling his injury a little bit. Ooh. Maybe. Well, maybe. Oh. Maybe. Maybe the debilitating uh, six to 12 month recovery time you were forecasting. Was a bit of a reach. Oh, oh boy! I never said that. Oh, oh I heard you say this is going to be a two to three year process. I oh boy! I might have to have a bionic <laughs> leg. <laughs> oh, I would have taken that though. Yeah, yeah. We're like I'm looking into. If alien I would have got technology. a bionic leg. I'd be on yeah. the scooter right now. That's like the true. St. Louis Cardinals medical staff took a look at you. Oh no! <laughs> He'll be out 16 months. What? Oh no! What? Mm-mm. He just had an allergic reaction to yogurt. How is he out two years? I did say, and Travis, you remember this? The day after it happened, I was concerned. Because it was locked up, it was tight and everything like that. But I also did say, I've never had a major knee injury before. I don't know how it's supposed to feel. But I am concerned the day after. And then when it started loosening up on that Friday, I was like, okay, this is a lot better. But there's still some pain in this one area. Let's go have it checked out. So I declined the pain meds because it's not really throbbing or anything. It's just it'll catch... And, like, kind of, you know, when you have something like that, your body just kind of jolts. Like, so if you see me walking and, like, you just see me go like this, it just means it caught for a second and it hurt. Well, then maybe medication can reduce, you know, the inflammation. Thus, you wouldn't have to worry about well, it. I got ibuprofen. Cognitive. They okay. gave me a steroid right. shot. Right. I don't, I mean, right. let's oh. not try and get. Obama sacrificed half I, his presidency for you the opportunity to absolutely overdose on drugs. So for you to just throw it back in his face, that seems pretty rude. I just don't know if I'm ready for a new addiction yet. Okay. I mean, well, maybe I am. Hmm. Let's reconsider. Maybe middle week. It's not getting better. I c- it's hurting. I need something more, Doc. Mm. Or maybe So maybe we readdress this at a later date. Well, here's one way you can go about it. Even if you come upon the part where you feel like you're getting addicted, you can always seek help. You can actually seek help with our friends here at St. Louis Counseling Services, in fact. Mm -hmm. St. Louis Counseling Services, of course, has a Mental Health Matters podcast here Mm -hmm. produced in this very studio, Mid-Coast Studio. Yeah, it says on the wall. St. Louis Counseling, improving lives since 1955. Check to make sure you're in the right studio. Mm -hmm. So make sure you guys... We're good. Look, hey, we're heading also into uh, cooler seasons. This is also a good time to talk to someone. We're heading into the holiday season. Uh-huh. So make sure you hit up the folks at St. Louis Counseling Services. They'll take good care of you. Yeah. Well, that's how you do a segue. That's, why I, that's why I went to Mizzou for eight years. That's why I went to Mizzou for nine gotta, years. I got to hit up <clears throat> KDHX still. I got to see if they got any Oh, my God. Footage. Let it go, man. Yeah, you do. You really should. No, you, I, should. you know how good Don't my dream team you. is? My, oh one of my God. members of my dream team over the weekend basically convinced me I should be on the suspect list. Oh. <laughs> of your own. Of my own, yes. Of your own injury. Yeah. Because of your own. It's but much. That's one but, way to do but it. Then he was much like, like the situation with the Atlanta bombing. <laughs> yeah. Your yeah. own Richard Jewell. Oh. Good for you. How did this happen? <laughs> good, good for you. He was, he was giving me a little advice on some areas that possibly if uh, we might be able to dip our toe into some money. You dipping oh, you no. dipping toes into money now. Now what That's happened uh, earlier with Travis's impression? Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to point this out. He was trying to sound like Michael Caine, but oh, Tom Brown like... comments Travis's Connery sure sounds a lot like Bane. <laughs> <laughs> so you're it was double wrong and was, Tom was right. Yeah, my fault. You feel better about yourself? I do not. Mm. I did do not. You, did you watch anything with Bane recently? I I did not. I was oh gosh, that's the only Michael Caine impersonation I know is from Dark Knight, <laughs> and so that's was, probably what happened. I what fell was into the, the movie canon where he was like the oil guy in Alaska. Steven Seagal was going there to fight him. Oh, Michael Caine was in a Steven Seagal. Movie? Yeah. And Michael was that Kane, the one where uh, Seagal was in the hot tub, the hot tub <laughs> scene with, is it Kelly LeBrock? Uh, there's something with like know. oil and Michael Caine and Steven Seagal out there somewhere in movies. I know there is. I think it was on late at night on HBO or something like that. Hmm. Interesting. 
but that's what I think of when Michael came. Because I thought he might have had like a bolo tie or something on. And too. this was, and he was in a. I real, I love Michael Caine, and I hate the fact that he was in a movie with Steven Seagal. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. You sure? Yeah, I'm Michael, pretty sure about Michael this. Michael Caine laid on a car note. Um, mm. it wasn't the amnesia one, was it? Mm. I like me some Michael Caine. He I'd brought to gravitas to the, to the, to the, to the Batman universe. He was needed, levity too, also to the Batman universe. At that, moment. he was a he was a good Alfred. He was a very good Alfred. Mm -hmm. He had the most poignant lines throughout that entire series. Do you think like some men just want to watch the world burn? I gotta get better at that impersonation. Well, that's a good line though too. That's a great line. That makes a ton of sense. Is is there a better movie line that we can relate to? To the current status of society, like it's not a matter of power and money anymore. For a lot of people, they have that. So for them, at this point, they enjoy the idea of chaos. Jeff Bezos doesn't need any more power. He doesn't need any more money. He enjoys the chaos of it all. Or, or okay, it's just not enough. I I. I don't know. If you're a billionaire at this point. I don't I can't I can't even begin to have the mindset of what this might be. But you can continue. I just think I think we're heading into our own hunger games and I think it's time that we start picking sides. Hmm. It only makes sense you're telling me it's not heading towards hunger games. How much more money can Jeff Bezos make? If there isn't any more money he can make. So, so at this point, just he's just sides, saying... sides, or how many sides are there? Well, he can create as many sides as he wants. I'm saying the billionaires were, are going to ultimately set the rules. Okay. And who are we to stop them? If billionaires said, all right, there's a $5 million purse at the end of this... Let's just say we do something like um, Running Man style. Mm -hmm. you, there are going to be thousands of Americans who sign up for this game, will they not? Now, there will be some level of regulations, but if you're a billionaire, you can buy out a few senators. You can buy out a couple of law enforcement officials. Running Man is very close to reality. Oh. Is it not? You, we have all these streaming services. You're telling me there isn't a Netflix out there, there isn't a Hulu out there that would not pay for the opportunity to put Running Man on their television or their streaming service? You're telling me Netflix, if they get to the point where they have to face their shareholders and go, man, I don't know. We are a very difficult time in finding new subscribers. So we're thinking about doing... It's like if they offer... Running Man. Okay, that or like the most dangerous game. Yes. You know, like, but with a big cash prize. Yes. Are you not participating? If, if push came to shove, if you lost everything today, and they were like, well, or Chris, we've, uh, we've heard about your athleticism in high school. We'll give you six months to train. Six months to train? To dunk a basketball? Oh, man. Wouldn't take that long. It would. Maybe. <laughs> I'd need to be sent to Germany for, uh, what do you have, those uh, regenerative uh, yeah, do like practices? A stem the cell blood, thing Stem in. cell, yeah. Exactly. If a billionaire said, okay, if, or say, let's go Stan Kroenke. Wait, you're telling me I have nothing to lose? Uh, well, essentially, yes. Great if Stan movie, Kroenke great movie says, also. If Stan Kroenke says on his private property... The ranch in Texas? That, you know, there's going to be a battle. It's going to be like the dangerous game. You survive it. You get $25 million. How many Americans do you believe would... Give me a percentage of Americans who would sign up for that opportunity. How many... Uh, is there a limit to the number of people that are playing? Who, how okay, many winners well, are there? There can only be five winners. Out of... No, out of, do we have to go against professional only athletes? One. You want to be just one, only no, one? I'm just quoting. No, are there okay. like are there sects of this? Are there heats? Are there are there different? It's a winner take all. Anybody can join. Age limit twenty one to to eighty. <laughs> to eighty. To eighty. So what are you equipped with? Anything? You are equipped with whatever weapons are available in your present neighborhood. Oh my god! So if you live in North City, so wait, your so chances I, are good. So who do you have to go up against? Each other. Uh, wait, like everybody in America? Like you get so be like there, 300 uh, people on this large Stan Kroenke esque ranch, like Hunger Games. The one who survives gets 25 million dollars. And what are you doing? There are you just have to survive. Oh, you have to murder each other. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you yeah. think there are? Do you think they could be? You think they'll be able to to fill a what, heat? 
You said 300 people? 300 people. Yeah, they'd fill that. There you go. <laughs> Without a doubt. So, oh, I'm it's saying. It's just like volunteers, and then there's one winner. There's one winner. So, 299 people are volunteering to die with the chance of becoming, what do you win? $25 million. Ooh. Cash money. Mm. Done. Yeah, that's filled pretty quick. Yeah. You have some dipshit mercenaries in there. And, uh... Yeah, you'd have people yeah, that are like, I would be the fit. He's like, oh, by the numbers, like, I should be. But then there'd also be, like, legitimate people, like, yeah, like a Green Beret. It's like, yeah, yeah, easy money. You know, like the guys that are over in the Mideast that are private companies just starting wars and that are bored. So yeah. They just come back to do this. Yeah. Or, the, or the military guys are like, well, my insurance has been getting screwed for the last six months mm-hmm. after uh, I fought for this country. Can't get into the VA. Yeah. All right. All right. So then here's the next question then. And I'm tapping out real quick. I'm not going there. Do you think it would be the highest rated television show in the world? Yeah. Far and away, we're horrible. So there we are. We're already here. Let's go ahead and get this bad boy going. Let's get it started. Are you the host? Oh, damn right. That's my idea. But you have to have. Like, you see what, you see what just, Survivor did like for Jeff Pros? You have to. I, I just, want that life, have, man. I want that Jeff Pros life. Have a, you have to have a funky like metal suit or something that no, looks futuristic. I just pictured I like you that. as um, what's his name in uh, the Fifth Element? Oh yeah. No. Oh, Chris Tucker. Chris, Chris Tucker. Tucker. Yeah. That's how I. Hey yo. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let's have you audition. Hold on. Okay. okay. All right. Go ahead. Hey, y'all. Somebody... This is another round of Murder Round. Oh, no. Good job. Murder. I would be really good at that show. Birch wants to know if there would be BMI classes. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fair. Like, I, you know, I'll die if it's a bunch of dudes with 3% body fat, but get me in there with some, some tubby guys. I got a better chance. Who's the corporate sponsor? You got to get one corporate sponsor. Who do you think is the corporate sponsor of Murder Round? Halliburton. There you go. You're going to go Walmart. Bain, Bain, go, Cap- or Walmart Bain Capital. Or Bain Capital. These are good. These are fair companies. These are absolutely good companies. Listen, we're just going to be a little more transparent because, uh, listen, the stuff we do anyway ultimately leads to many more deaths. Yeah. <laughs> do you th- that's Amazon? Big Coal Amazon. makes a comeback. <laughs> big Coal. <laughs> <laughs> this is our last chance to be relevant. Uh, Utz. If you watch the Cardinals game, <laughs> if you watch, if you watch the did. Cardinals game yesterday, oh my gosh, they spent a ten-year ad budget on one divisional playoff. My game. sister, we were watching. What uh, is that? Oh yeah, my sister we and I we were watching. I think uh, she was asking about. They were watching the end of game two. And she was like, uh, we asked ourselves that question. I asked her, I was like, what's us? She was like, I was going to ask you what's us. I was like, is that the point? We're supposed to look it up ourselves and that's how they get it? Because they say nothing. Like they go, this divisional series is presented by us. And I was expecting a tagline to know what they were. And there was no tagline. It was just like, this is presented by us. And there's a, is it a, is it a child? I is there a mascot? Like, is that a woman? What is that? Something. And then they sell <laughs> cheese balls. And, <laughs> I don't know. Like it may be the official sponsor of Murder Round. I personally Sounds blame good. them for Carlos Martinez's breakdown in the ninth no, inning. We didn't have to go there. Maybe Mike Schilt ate too many of their snacks. Hey, and wasn't, and wasn't that's thinking. That's not necessary. Mm-hmm. I told you they were playing with house money, baby. And I told you at the beginning of this entire process that it was going to be their offense. Did would you? you? Would you allow? I did. Would you allow Roundup to be a sponsor for the? Uh, oh, oh the that would get rid of the weeds. <laughs> Do you have like a uh, on death row division? Like many movies have been made like that, right? Like yeah. didn't Jason Statham? Do or you can do that? that. Yes, you can do that. What if that without that? Now that may be a more interesting game, but I think would be tolerable to the most most of the public if you then put death row inmates in on the game. And then the winner gets freedom. That's fun. Not just free. Because you're kind of rooting for the best one at the same time. Do you want the best one free? Oh, (laughs) if you're the best murderer. You're the best murderer. Do you really want him to go free? That's the the fun of this game. Because you're like, yeah, those murderers are killing each other. Then you go, wait a minute. We didn't cheer a little bit too hard. We didn't see now what Chris Gardner can do. We know what he can do now. Boy, do we want that free? Death row all of a sudden? Yeah, well, we figured that you would get around to it. Well, when it, when I we, like watching you write the script for how society completely breaks down. Yeah, because it's pretty accurate, isn't it? All you do is just open the newspaper and you go, you just pick a little of this, a little bit of that, and you can kind of sort of figure it all out. What's the push that it takes for all this to happen is the question. What's the final breaking point Yeah. for us to get to what death row murder about? round? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great ass style, right? <laughs> death row murder round. You wouldn't wear that T-shirt. Yeah. Go death row murder round. Woo! Hmm. On CBS this fall. Uh-huh. 
Oh, what channel would it be on? It would absolutely. It's the Death Row Murder Round. That I think sounds like something on like HGTV. Uh, I think you go back to uh, to Fox's roots when they were cops and animals attack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, you know what? It'd, it'd be on the Joe Rogan show. No. Oh, no. no. no just no. put it on a show. No, okay, it's its own figure. show by itself. Oh, okay. I mean, you get more viewers. Well, Rogan way. would obviously be my co-host. Oh, okay. We're not doing that without Oh, Rogan. you're the host. Oh, well, I am the host of the Death Row Murder You're the host. I'll that's right. That. Oh, yeah, you're wearing the metal suit. Oh, that's a good question. What do you think will ultimately push society to the brink of having that become Death reality? And then ultimately extinction. Hmm. I think it happens pretty soon. I think it happens when the president loses the election next November and okay. refuses to leave office. Okay. Okay. I think that's what happens. I think he's just like, nope, not leaving. Sorry, door's locked. Put up a new, uh, new president, new me, new year, new me. Can't, can't take me out of here. Sorry. Everybody's like, oh, fuck it, dude. If he's not leaving, then we're just going to do whatever the hell we want. Right. Yeah, if he's not network, ex- <laughs> network execs are like, listen, we've been sitting on this for a few years. <laughs> you, know, you know there's somebody. Instant rating. That's in the vault sweeps somewhere. Is, sweeps is right around yeah, the corner. Yeah, they thought about it. Mm. You've thought about People have thought about it. Oh, yeah, for sure. So that. That's why it's been brought up nine jillion times. That or like. Do we have a disgraced athlete's uh, heat? Ooh. Oh, OJ, Ray Jose Caruso. Canseco, Jose Canseco would be like, he would just do it. He'd be like, yeah, I could use the money. But yeah, Ray Caruth. This is where OJ finally gets to shine. This is where OJ finally goes, look, I know y'all been talking shit. I saw the movies. I saw the documentary. I know I'm a piece of shit. I know I'm trash. But you want me in this game. You need me in this game. Mm-hmm. If there was ever a time for someone to lead a murderous re- revolution, who better than OJ? He's charismatic, he's charming, and he's murderous. He's like popped up from the camera. And he just pops up out of nowhere. He goes, I found the murderer. Who what, better to what, what if OJ has to be your field correspondent and you have to throw it to him? Oh, that'd he's be like good. He's like an analyst. And he's, he, he, he's, he's a murder his analyst. His job, yes, his job. He would be an analyst. He would be a sideline reporter oh, to God. death row murder round. So you're contributing to OJ. I'm not contributing to OJ, but let's put him to some use. Let's put him him to some use. If he's going to be allowed to be out of jail and put up Twitter videos every other week, Mm -hmm. then we should put him to use. Breaking down fantasy. Breaking down, yes, because that's what we want. (laughs) Let's put him to good use. Who better to know athleticism and murdering than OJ Simpson? I'll tell you who wouldn't sponsor death murder round. Uh, death row murder round. Thank you. Gateway powder coating because they're a wholesome business, right? <laughs> Number one powder coating resource in the Midwest. Maybe they would powder coat the metal weapons. We could do that. We could get them. Oh, a that gig. would be dope. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, a job's a job. Gatewaypowdercoat.com is their website. Fast, durable, and affordable. That's powder coating for all of your metal. That to, if it can be painted, Travis, it can be powder coated. That's Thank right. You. Maybe one of the losers would have to get powder coated. I don't think that would go over well. Mm-hmm. Gatewaypowdercoat.com for more information. Check them out. Uh, so, okay, so we've settled it. Uh, Death Row Murder Round. Black Sheep wants it on True TV with the Impractical Jokers and uh, <laughs> Repo Folks and maybe, maybe a sassy black lady uh, incorporated in I would. Yeah, who, I'm trying to see who would be in my studio pregame show. Who would be in your oh. studio pregame show for Death Row Murder Round? No offense, but Larry Zonk is still around. He was so good on American Gladiator. Gladiator, so good. I mean, you could. Do you want like credible journalists that are like freaking out, or do you want like, do you want like people from World Star who commentated fight videos? No, oh! I, I want <laughs> you somebody. Want I want somebody to put me in the action. I want somebody to set the scene. So I want somebody who they don't necessarily have to be a current broadcast anchor person, but I want somebody who can truly set the scene Charlie for Steiner. what we're about to be. I have to go Quinn Tarantino. Quinn Tarantino has to be you need to hear the on that panel. I was thinking, you need to hear the it's probably going to be dropped anyway. So. Is this a like a play-by-play thing, or is this? More well, then you a... got you got your normal pregame, and then you'll have your play-by-play guys. Now, so okay. we can we can we can so we're maybe not, uh, that's not too long on time. We can do a play-by-play guys. Uh, Who's our color guy? Who's our play-by-play guys? Gus and Johnson. Gus Johnson. Yeah, that makes Bill sense. Bird. Did, uh, Seth says Bill Burr would be a great commentator. He did, was a great commentator for the racial draft. Yes, he was on Chappelle. Okay, well then that that's fine. Bill Burr and and Gus Johnson. For no, death row murder screw round? Screw it. Just go Bill Burr and Chappelle. It's like, oh, well, you know, 
This is the worst thing possible that could happen. So let's do it. Ah, see, there. Chappelle was. I don't. I want commentary. I want somebody oh, to, want to explain All to me. Right. He's like, this is why he's going to use the forty-five caliber because you see, it has a long range. I need somebody who knows Bring who can just really into it. As, yeah. As, uh... I, I, Jesse Ventura. You got Jesse Ventura, yeah. former military guy. He's a psycho. He was actually in Running Man. So Jesse Ventura would make a ton of sense. So is OJ in the game or is OJ an analyst? OJ is an analyst. He's our sideline reporter. I have made OJ my sideline reporter for a death row murder round. So he's the guy like in the field because ain't nobody going to try to murder OJ. So they throw down to him? Yeah, they'll throw down to him. Like We're going to go down to the murder pit with OJ Simpson. But to quell public upheaval, they say OJ is eligible to be taken out. But he can also eliminate people. He's not part of the game, but since he's entered the field... They can club him with no recourse, and he can also take people out. Now, yes. It's like, hey, once you cross the line, you're in it, but you're not eligible for the prize. You're an employee. Okay. Murder so OJ's sideline. Ventura is the... <laughs> well, I got Ventura as the color, color analyst. Okay. He's a 9-11 truther as well. <laughs> yes. Well, you, you want crazy. Black uh, sheep wants Bob Uecker. <laughs> oh, not, we got to keep Bob as far away from that as yeah. possible. He's a legend. Uh... And a great human being. <laughs> I was thinking Gus Johnson for play by play, but we can go a different route if we want. I mean, um, is this not is this not uh, a job? Is this not I a, just got a is this not a job for Costas? How's Costas Cost, and his his poetry, yeah. his prose? Yeah. We're gonna get some beautiful commentary from St. Louis's finest. Okay. I mean, that's fine. There's some options there. And then of course, if push comes to shove, gotta go with Jim Nance. I like Nance and the, the gentleness of Jim Nance in a situation of this to kind of juxtapose the actual event itself. Maybe Nance and Ventura. They, that's a perfect balance. Cause Nance, so Jim Nance. Here goes the sniper. He has his eyes set on the forehead. Because I was thinking Kevin Harlan, too, just because his three-point oh, call would so be great good. with right between the eyes. That would be good. And boom, way downtown, bang! Yeah. 30 people dead. Uh-huh. Mm. Mm. But so, I yeah, think, I think putting com- Nance in there and the gentleness of his of his announcing would be good. Death row murder. Round. He's, been, he's been around for big moments. And plus, he'd have a nice little line, a Nanceism at he the end would. of it all. <laughs> That'd be fun. So I'll go. I'll the go. end of this game marks the end of the world. Something along those lines. I kind of. Yeah. The streets of red run blood. What? The streets of red run blood. I think I kind of... You you reversed everything there? I did. I just... The streets of red I kinda <laughs> run blood. It's a CTE. I My keep bad. can't be two of us using that excuse. No, no it's kind of bad. I just feel like it's going around a day. The streets of red yeah. run blood. Yeah. I, <gasps> or it's a gang reference. This could be a gang reference. It could be that, too. Not during October. And then, of course, this naturally leads up to the great game we've all been waiting. We can do this every four years, like the Olympics. We can actually finally have our real race wars. It sounds like you're eventually getting to the purge here. Yes. (laughs) But I feel like if we're going to do it, let's do it like America knows how to do best. We do television better than anybody else. So let's go ahead and make it real entertainment. We're there. Why the hell not? And you know the world is... It's truly getting to that point because I don't know if you you, you don't watch football, and, and I understand why. But yesterday there was a who's who at the Cowboys Packers game in oh, Dallas. Oh, I saw some of this. I think. So there's a couple. There were a couple big. Of course, you saw the uh, one of the most, and I think it's funny because the show Secession on HBO, very popular, very very good show. You've been you've been preaching that. For I've been a while. preaching. I, I swear to God, you guys will out. love it. It is just so 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 so, so fun. And Brian Cox plays this. Rupert Murdoch type of character. And sure enough, at the Dallas Cowboy game yesterday, Rupert Murdoch in attendance with Jerry, what's the former model actress? He's dating her now. Used to be fine, white woman back in the day. Jerry, I can't remember. Seinfeld. No, look it up. You got the Google box in front of you. I don't think that's it. Galwell. Tom and Jerry. Oh, it's not. Look it up. The Just woman's so, name is Jerry? Yeah, the, whoop, with yeah, her G? name G-E-R-I, I believe. Rupert Murdoch. Hallowell? Is, girl. is that her name? 
the Spice Girl? No, not her. That's what I was thinking. Of. No, not her. I Rupert wish. Murdoch has a model girlfriend. Not her. And well, she's an older lady, but she's not like you know, twenty years old. Jerry, Jerry Hall. There we go, Jerry Hall. I wouldn't have ever guessed that. I would have if I had just had more time and a Google box. But the fact is, Jerry. Okay, Hall, wait. She used to be married to Mick Jagger. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Bad lady. So now, yeah. So she's sixty-three years old. Uh, so she was a tennis, and old Joe Buck was like, "Oh, there's uh, Rupert and Jerry." Like it was just like some sitcom that's going to show up on Fox. But that wasn't the most impressive couple of the entire Sunday mm-hmm. at that very stadium. Okay. And attendance. George W. Bush. Saw that. Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> sitting in the same booth together. George and Laura. Ellen and Portia. Taking in a Dallas Cowboys game. There you go. Not Do you think they went cycling and painting all? beforehand? I don't know. What That's what Bush does. That. I knew some uh, what, a former girlfriend's aunt lived like not far from his neighborhood in Dallas. She's like, I see him bicycling by here all the time. It's this like, is <laughs> George Bush. She's mm-hmm. like, yeah, George Bush. Uh, what? Now, I know a lot of shit has happened in the last three and a half years with this particular has there ever president. Been an, has there been a better glow up in the last 20 years? When did George W. become the fuzzy uncle of America? He always was. It's just he had the guy in his ear telling him to do the stuff that you hated. You know, starting a war. Starting wars and stuff that you hate. Dividing the country. <laughs> How did George W. That is the... You come on, that is, I, damn it! How do we have? How did this happen? You like George W. Michelle and Ellen, two of the the most beautiful people I know on earth. That's why you. you it's because of Michelle. You find Michelle, Ellen. what do you? I don't. When did Ellen it happen? Attractive. Michelle. Michelle helped with the glow up. Michelle gave that man a, the yeah. paintings. Also helped, and the paintings of the dogs. Yeah. And Laura being such a sweet lady you would also helped. Follow Michelle well. Obama to hell if she asked you to. I wouldn't go that True. far, but yeah. I would probably at least drive like, up to the on, gate. Trav. You're lucky it doesn't exist. Oh. So. <laughs> I just, I don't, this is so weird, this development of George W. becoming America's fuzzy uncle is just so... It's great. I love it. <laughs> I think it's really fun. Is this how we're going to think of Trump when President Putin no. takes over? I think it's really, really Like, ah, oh, man, I missed those tweets. Oh, man, Putin's got me going to another camp. Mm. Oh, I missed those tweets. Mm. I wish he would call me a loser right now. I miss those hats. Well, it's so, rel- look it's at this. relative to what's next, I guess. Yeah, I'm assuming that's how it works. Because Donald Trump has added to the glow up of George W. Bush. I have to say, that is a plot twist I did not see coming. Mm-hmm. He's the fuzzy uncle for America. Oh, there's George. I don't know if he's the fuzzy uncle I, for America. I mean, he's, I mean, people don't. People still know what happened. People know, but people don't hate him. Like I, f- I feel like his his image has changed. Yeah. Like the 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 vitriol that used to be for George. I was there. I remember. I was. I remember Katrina. <laughs> it was yesterday. He was horrible. And now he's the. Now, now, now you know what's gonna happen. Aww. Now you know what's gonna happen. People are gonna start uh, looking into like drone strikes and stuff like that, and it's gonna be a heel turn for your favorite president. Mm. And people are going to feel differently because they love, he was beloved. And then now, also, it is weird thinking like how much people loved Obama, but then there was another sect of people that were like wanting him out, dead or whatever. Still Ter- do. Something terrible. Yeah. Still do. But no, that's what's going to happen. Charles. One of them's in the White House. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. I think they were pals. I, I. <sighs> I don't know. I, I just, man, you're right. I think it's just relative to who the next worst thing is. Yeah. And that's fascinating to me how that's in the why, psychosis of America. That's why everything's not necessarily a game changer. Ooh, what about this, Travis? Birch said Michelle did ruin kids' lunches and they're now voting age. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> Yes, she did. Yeah, what's up now? <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> I, um, I I don't know how that stuff works. I know that like oh, it school, like lunches, school lunches are n- notoriously have, listen, food service providers, they're going to go just sell you the cheapest stuff they have. So it is. Whatever. That ain't cow but meat. didn't she make, <laughs> didn't, just, were, the, were some of the photos like, look at what, what lunch is today because of these new things. Wasn't it like 
pretty bad. No, it wasn't that bad. They were shitty chips, though. There were some, like, no, the snacks no, no, were shitty. No, but it was like, no, but that's another thing. We're no, like, no, because. Do these kids need snacks? Like, no, well, they, they actually got started. They started getting Twinkies things. and Pepsi every Well, they day. started getting things like Stir Fry and things like that. No, I don't. Th- that's well, not what out, I'm out at the about. schools I worked at when the president was. There was, there was differences like that. There were, like, I, I mean, truly don't know. It wasn't like, yeah. Because let's not the pretend the burgers I got in 1996 or anything like super great. Or but here's anything. the thing also, and then I I know some schools allowed it. I don't know if they kind of put the kibosh on it, but it was you could like go through Uber Eats like and order food to the school. And so, I mean, there was a workaround. Parents would either just bring, you know, Chick-fil-A or Chipotle for their kid. Uh, yeah, that's or another kid, thing. Or, or they have like... open campus where kids would leave, so it wasn't as if... So those same restraints we had growing up, going to school, these kids didn't necessarily I have. brought my lunch. Well, yeah. Yeah, but then there's like open lunches and stuff. Like, I swear the Little Caesars in Farmington, Missouri stayed open because... Columbia's high school, high school open campuses, so they yeah. can leave school to go get yeah, lunch. I don't know. So like, maybe it was just affecting yeah. like people that like were chained to the school lunch program. Yeah, uh, probably more so than anything else, but that's also It's the good. least educated discussion about a policy that's ever been had. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, well, I don't know. What are you, you going to do? Yeah, I, so I had fries. They did have those, those, those baked chips. Those weren't great. Like Lay's baked? Yeah, they were. Whoa. Wouldn't they be more expensive? I, I don't know if they were more expensive, They but they, they, they promoted it like it was more or healthier. Listen, I all was, I know is... I always brought they, Pringles. If they, if, <laughs> of course you did. If they stopped kids from getting... Double trays on, <laughs> on uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to think. On pizza, lasagna. Or like, what was the mashed potato? Like, yeah, I'm talking when I'm 16. I'm like, they're like, okay, here's your extra. No, 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 no. I said double trays. Actually, I miss school lunch. I wish they, I wish like. Back they, when people would speak to you in public. Yeah, that's also true. You know what I miss? And I wanted to go back because there's no way this is still there. It's not necessarily school lunch, but it's, we hop baseball fields in Florissant. Right. Where I played Quarry Lake. Their pizza that they had at the concession stand was like this rectangle mm. wrapped in yeah. foil. Oh, boy, it was delicious. It was so good. I loved it. Yeah. I haven't had it since I was. No, can't find it anywhere else, man. I don't know. Eight, nine, ten years old? Jesus. It was so good. Back before you had to let's stay say 30 a years. half a mile away from school. Yeah, let's say 30. I Actually, I almost I was ejected from that park once from my... <laughs> The only baseball game I ever got thrown out of was my little brother's game. Why the hell were you thrown out of? I yelled at the umpire, okay? How old were you? I was in eighth grade, I think. Jesus, man. What'd you say? I cursed at the umpire. Oh, you had the magic word. My brother hit a home run, and he called it a ground rule double, and I started... I called him an asshole, and then... Oh, wow! I got thrown out. Oh, wow! I I had my own game coming up in a little bit, so I had to go walk around eventually so I could go play. Um, I think it was the same year I broke my collarbone. Oh, well. It was the same tournament. Anyway, we hopped there. They had that pizza wrapped in the foil that was a rectangle, and I I would just like to try that one more I time. Agree. Like, it's been 30 years since I've had that. I would, whoever, I would, I don't know if anyone has worked there for a long time and they know who produced it or where they got it from. I'd like to know if it's still available anywhere. That would be nice. But that's a, that's a taste from my childhood that I would like to have once again. Chris, book rectangle pizza. Okay, good. Have you booked the Goo Goo Dolls yet? No, I have not. They're performing it uh, on a Sunday show at Ballpark Village, which means a they don't need to promote anything. Yeah. And then b it's on a Sunday, so they're gonna drive in, play for ninety minutes, check, and then, and then drive out. So, but I'm gonna need you to book Johnny Resnick for uh, for the show. Yeah. Special special episode. Thank you. I was probably yeah. I don't do special episodes anymore. <laughs> do the Goo Goo Dolls do that one song off a uh, City of Angels soundtrack? Uh huh. Which one? And I do Damn it, Gardner. To see me, and I said you don't know who I am, and I have a day to be broken. I just want you to know who I am. I just want you to know who I am. And then Meg Ryan's riding down the street, and then boom, she's completely crushed, Final Destination style. Mm. What a great film. So much for Nick Cage. Face off. Oh. What? Okay. 
Uh, guys, this mm -hmm. weekend we will be Oktoberfest in Soulard Market Park. That's right, Oktoberfest this weekend, Friday and Saturday. Travis and I will be hosting the festivities. Both days. Both days. That is correct. It's free to get in. There are You're VIP asshole, tickets. <laughs> I mean, that's... The, uh, October 11th and 12th. Oktoberfest returns to Soulard Market Park Friday, October 11th, Saturday, October 12th. Hey, that's me! I had to use that same photo again. Celebrate the German heritage of both Soulard and St. Louis through two days of food, drink, live music, and entertainment. That's right. Event free, open to the public. But if you want to enhance your Oktoberfest experience, VIP tickets to the beer hall tent are available for $20 per person. You want to know what it includes, Travis? What does that include, Chris? Friday and Saturday. Both of these can be used. Access to the beer hall tent featuring exclusive entertainment, full in and out privileges, an official one liter Soulard Oktoberfest Stein, which is a $10 value, premium beer selection available for purchase, prizes. Great entertainment from tent exclusive bands, including Grammy Award winners, Brave Combo, everybody. Oh. Ooh, they've been on The Simpsons. Did you know that? Uh -huh. Check out the complete list of music and events online, Oktoberfest at Soulard Market Park. Get those VIP tickets through Eventbrite. Very excited to be there and uh, have some fun this weekend, Friday and Saturday at Soulard Market Park. Uh, guys, it's been a fun first hour. We've got the Great American Race next hour. Lots still to get to. Let's get Gardner and Menthol. Hit share, damn it. We'll be right back.